This Santa Fe Railway training film provides a glimpse into the operation of steam locomotives in the early 1940s. Let's get started. Upon boarding the locomotive, the engineer inspects the firebox for loose bricks, leaky flues, or broken bolts. As he opens the fire door, we can see the brickwork in the background and sparks in the foreground. These are caused by water in the oil supply. The engineer then begins blowing down the sight glasses. He starts by opening the sight glass drain, after which he closes the bottom sight glass valve. Once closed, the engineer steps up and closes the top sight glass valve. This proves the glass can be isolated in the event it breaks, and it helps flush any accumulated debris out of the passages. Next, we pan to the engineer, checking the three gauge cocks on the back head which serve as an absolute failsafe should there be a concern about water level readings of the two glasses. The 3460 class locomotives were all equipped with automatic train stop, permitting the safe operation of trains up to 100 miles per hour. The fountain, more commonly referred to as the turret, is a manifold that controls the flow of steam to the locomotive's appliances. Here, the engineer checks to make sure each valve moves and is opened entirely. Prior to the day's run, the engineman would test the injector. Here, the engineer opens the water valve, activates the steam line, checks for water flow, then shuts off the injector, verifying its operation. Even modern Santa Fe power relied upon some oil cups to lubricate portions of the running gear, including much of the valve motion that does not require full rotation. The Santa Fe Engineering Department provided built-in ladders on each side of the engine to facilitate easier lubrication of key components. You can see here the 84-inch drivers of the 3460 class towering over our engineer. After lubricating the locomotive valve motion, the engineer then continues by lubricating all of the trailing truck and tender axle boxes and pedestals. We also see him reach between the engine and tender to oil the Franklin radial buffer wear block. Our cameraman then follows the engineer onto the fireman's side of the engine to watch as he repeats the lubrication process.
Here we see the locomotive easing back to make a joint with the passenger train. Note the ease with which the engineer makes the coupling and the gentle stretch, ensuring the locomotive successfully coupled to the train. Here the fireman verifies the presence of the various wrenches he might need to make repairs on the fly. He checks to make sure he has multiple colored lanterns, one each with a red and clear globe. The clear is used for general illumination, while the red is used for signaling to other trains in the event of an emergency. Then he climbs onto the tender to check the long dipstick that gauges the amount of oil in the 3464's 7,000 gallon oil bunker. Looks like we're good to go. Just as done by the engineer, the fireman peers into the firebox to make sure nothing is amiss. He takes a long prong to clear out oil and carbon buildup from in front of the oil nozzle. Once to his satisfaction, he again closes the fire door in preparation for departure. Timekeeping in the railroad industry is a crucial part of operations and safety. Before the run, the engineer, fireman, and conductor compare watches to ensure they're in sync and verify train orders. With a passenger train full of patrons, it's crucial to ensure that the slack of the train is fully stretched before aggressively opening the throttle. We see the engineer gently bunch up to the first car, then put the reverser fully into the corner to begin forward movement. The seven-foot drivers of number 3464 move 21 feet in a revolution, permitting one slow turn of the drivers to stretch the slack of even the longest passenger train. A quick whistle blast for a crossing, and the engineer pulls out for yet more steam. He hooks up the reverser once more and gives the throttle another good tug as the locomotive accelerates its train out of the station. To aid in drafting and minimize smoke trailing close to the train at high speeds, the Santa Fe employed pneumatically operated stack extensions. Here the engineer operates the stack extension valve, raising the smokestack. Proper firing requires an alert fireman. Here, the fireman adjusts the atomizer, then opens the feed water heater control valve and shuts the blower, now that the train has plenty of draft from the cylinder exhaust. Uncombusted oil and contaminants will line flues in the tube sheet, decreasing the efficiency of the boiler. When the locomotive is being worked with a strong draft, the fireman will close the dampers and use a special circular scoop to drop sand through the peephole in the fire door where it's carried through the firebox by the strong draft of the engine, effectively sandblasting the sheet and tubes. This is done, per Santa Fe rules, frequently and with as minimal sand as required to keep flues clear of oil residue. A special hopper on the front of the tender carries the sand. As water boils, it generates pure steam, leaving mineral contaminants in the water. Generally, every 20 or 30 miles, the crew will operate manual blow-off valves to remove sediment from the lowest portion of the boiler. To keep passengers warm in winter and cool in summer, the Santa Fe relied upon steam heat and steam ejector air conditioning. The fireman governs the flow of steam to the passenger cars through use of this valve, which he's inspecting. To aid in making the thick bunker C grade oil flow more easily prior to atomization, oil burning engines use a series of steam filled metal coils to preheat oil in a special portion of the tender oil bunker. Steam can also be directly injected into the oil bunker to heat and stir up the oil. The many gauges of the steam locomotive cab provide our trainmen crucial information about the engine. The main steam pressure gauge shows the locomotive operating at just below its maximum authorized working pressure of 300 pounds per square inch. We then pan to the speedometer showing a brisk 20 miles per hour as the engine accelerates out of the yard. This shot shows the various water pump gauges used by the firemen to monitor the feed water system. A quick pan back to the speedometer and we see what the 3460 class was designed to do, make speed 
Pausing the video here and enhancing a bit, we see the locomotive making 93 miles per hour. To keep the train fully stretched, the engineer takes a train brake reduction while still maintaining a partially open throttle. The open throttle is key. Shutting the throttle entirely while moving will cause the cylinders to develop a vacuum, drawing exhaust gases backward through the valves and into the cylinders. Other classes of modern Santa Fe steam had drifting and bypass valves, but these flatland engines were never equipped with such an arrangement. As the train slows, the engineer takes the opportunity to check again the accuracy of the sight glasses. To accelerate, the engineer places the reverser in the corner and opens the throttle. He then hooks up the reverser as the speed of the train increases. To prevent minerals left in the boiler water from adhering to boiler surfaces, a boiler compound or treatment is added to the tender whenever water is topped up. The fireman takes time to measure out some compound, then fill a bucket with the deck hose to mix up the caustic additive. He sets the bucket against the backhead, allowing the water to heat up and aid in mixing the compound into the water. Once the engine stops, he'll add the bucket full of compound to the tender water tank. To ensure accurate reading of boiler water level, it's important to keep sight glasses clear of scale and sediment. Periodic testing and blowing down of the glasses when the engine is operating over the road keeps them reading true and accurate. Again, note that the fireman first opens the sight glass drain at the bottom, then he closes the bottom sight glass valve, then the top sight glass valve. He then opens the bottom valve, opens the top valve, and closes the drain. When finished, the valves are opened only two turns, permitting quick isolation of the sight glass in case it breaks. Once the train is stopped at the station, the fireman climbs onto the tender, boiler water treatment bucket in hand, to top up the 20,000 gallon water tank. He adds the water treatment first, then uses the hook to safely grab the water crane. With one flick of the valve, he begins filling the 20,000 gallon tender tank. When done, the fireman is careful to place the water crane back into the clear, but notice how he keeps his center of gravity over the tender. Safety first. Manual operation of the foam meter controlled automatic blow off valve is done periodically along the route, especially prior to long uphill grades to prevent automatic blow off as the engine works hard. Here we see the engineer running number 3464 at full throttle. When he gets a signal to make a safety stop at an upcoming crossing, he begins by partially closing the throttle and taking an air brake reduction. Notice the way he manipulates the throttle and train brake as he slows the train to ensure that it stays stretched. Maintaining some throttle and pulling against the braking train enables this stretching. Once the train is stopped, the engineer has the reverser in the corner and begins to accelerate. 
He opens the throttle, begins to hook up the reverser, adds a touch of sand, and off they go. Again, the fireman is adding sand to the firebox during strong acceleration of the engine, ensuring an efficient steaming locomotive. We can then see him returning the damper to its fully open position. As the train prepares to leave cab control territory, the engineer manipulates the cab control cutout switch. Steam locomotive deck hoses use steam pressure to push water from the boiler feed water supply line for use in washing the cab and mixing boiler treatment. Here, the fireman washes down the cab floor with the deck hose. This valve permits the fireman to gauge the level of water in the tender without climbing onto the back of the tender. The fireman also periodically checks the water valves to ensure the water feed to the water pump is open. The engineer is shown once again bringing the train to a stop. Notice that the engineer places the engine into full forward gear as he closes the throttle to drift. This ensures full lubrication of the piston valves as the train slows to a stop. The Coalition for Sustainable Rail is working to ensure that the sister locomotive to number 3464, its sole surviving relative, is preserved for future generations. More information about the preservation of Santa Fe 3463 and ways in which you might help out the cause may be found on CSR's website, www.csrail.org.